So has anything changed or is it still fundamentally a she said, he said story? At Issue is back now for the second time this week with the analysis. Chantal Hébert is in Montreal, Andrew Coyne is in Toronto, and Paul Wells is in Ottawa tonight. All right, I guess let's start at the obvious place with Jerry Butts' testimony, uh, someone we obviously don't hear from very often. This was sort of the other part of this story that we we're all anticipating. Uh, Andrew, I'm going to start with you. Do you think that he uh, set up a, a, a credible narrative on the other side uh, of Jody Wilson-Raybould? Well, he didn't deny very much. There were a couple of things where he said, I have no recollection or I, re I recall that conversation differently. Mostly it was just a variant on the same spin, which was, it wasn't pressure, or if it was pressure, it was just so she would get a second opinion. Uh, because she took, she didn't take long enough making her decision or because uh, this, this law is supposedly new or because there's fresh evidence or a number of different things were trotted out. But all of them kind of miss the point, which is it's not up to them to pass judgment. It's not up to them to say, well, she didn't take long enough. It's not up to them to press upon her a second opinion. It's entirely up to her. It's really, at first instance, up to the director of public prosecutions. And in rare and exceptional circumstances, the, uh, the attorney general can overrule her with a written directive. It is nobody's business in the prime minister's office, from the prime minister on down, and yet they all made it their business. Okay, although, Chantal, one of the things that, that Butts said was that he didn't no until last week that Jody Wilson-Raybould had made a final decision and his understanding was that this could continue to be debated until there was a criminal verdict. Yes, and we were treated uh, by senior civil servants after, but to uh, variations on that theme. I thought that uh, his mission was uh, to establish an alternative uh, narrative yeah. and to do so without looking like a bully. Uh, because he was taking on someone who's now considered as a, a, a kind of a political saint. And I thought he achieved as much as he could achieve. Uh, I don't think that uh, he's going to convince people who, who have already made up their minds, but I think he probably managed to uh, at least sow some seeds of reasonable doubts as to whether there was just one way to look at this uh, and not two ways. I don't think the story is played out, but uh, I think this was as far or as much good as he could do to the government's uh, side of the story. What do you What do you think, Paul? Did he do some some good for the government's perspective here, or or not really change things at all? This was the best day that the that Team Trudeau, as distinct from the government, because the government used to include people like Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philpott. This is the best day that J that Team. Trudeau has had because it is the first time anyone on Team Trudeau has spoken in complete sentences in any detail um, and uh, and was conspicuously uh, uh, full of courtesy to all involved um, and uh, um, he, he essentially had a different interpretation of the role of the public prosecutor the role of the Attorney General from Jody Wilson Rabel um, he said that if Scott Bryson hadn't quit cabinet she would still be Attorney General it is reasonable to conclude from his testimony that she would still be hearing about weekly from the prime minister or one of his emissaries asking whether she changed her mind yet and that that would never stop because in uh, Jerry Butts's mind there, there, it is not possible to have a final decision not just that she never made a final decision yes. but no such thing is possible until the day of verdict is handed in which is which is a novel idea to me I've never heard something like that or, or until so, they so get the answer they want oh, oh, well okay <laughs> I mean, it is it is a fact of legal life, though, that even when a, pro, a trial is started, it can stop abruptly because uh, the two sides have come to a, a absolutely deal. because a professional so, prosecutor makes yes. that call. Okay, but, but you can work from that the inference that you would think that it's not over until it's completely okay. over. Let I'm not wanting to discuss no, legalities, <laughs> but uh, it is also possible to get from the testimony that this wasn't the biggest central preoccupation of the government. Yes, he, uh, he that, made, yes. yes she, she heard about it. Uh, I don't doubt that uh, there was a point of view in the PMO that was not the point of view that she had, but I'm not convinced that they woke up morning, noon and night thinking, let's call Jody to ask her to change her mind. Okay, and, and well, one of the points that, that, that Butts reiterated when saying that he didn't do anything wrong was the fact, and they've, they've done this before, but he, he did it in a very succinct way here, that, that Jody Wilson-Raybould uh, didn't communicate to him that, that she felt pressured and she didn't communicate it to the Prime Minister. I just want to play this clip and then I'll get you guys to respond. If this was wrong, and wrong in the way it is alleged to have been wrong, why 
are we having this discussion now and not in the middle of September or October or November or December? Andrew, what do you make of that argument? I find that the most mystifying part of his testimony. According to her testimony, she told the prime minister at the meeting on September 17th, she told the clerk, she told the finance minister, she told Butts himself on December 5th, she told the two PMO officials, Bouchard and Marquez, she had told everyone, A, I've made up my mind, B, this interference and in, in pressure is highly improper, please stop. Maybe she didn't say please. Uh, <laughs> so for him to say, maybe he can say, well, I don't recall her saying that to me, but he'd also have to say, the prime minister never told me, the people who report to me never told me, or maybe she made up all those quotes as well. But she, she, they made a big deal, Paul, of talking about how the number of meetings that she had, and, and she didn't even take all those 10 or 11 meetings that happened, was not uh, a large number compared to the way these things get deliberated. I don't know if that's something that resonates beyond this place or if it resonates at all. Um, I admit to being surprised at the notion that Justin Trudeau needs 10 meetings with a minister uh, to figure out what she thinks about something. Um, I, would, I would wonder how many meetings he had with Christian Freeland about the details of negotiating free trade with Europe, for instance. I'm given to understand that it wasn't, a, it, it, it wasn't 40, it wasn't three. Um, uh, this, this is a very hands-off prime minister whose uh, right hand is suddenly arguing that uh, th there, there hasn't been a fulsome conversation until there's been more than once a week for four months. Look, if the Prime Minister of Canada was sending someone to talk to me once a week for four months, I would think that he was pretty preoccupied with what I was doing. Or maybe you would want you to run for him. <laughs> <laughs> so where does this where does this leave us at the end of the day? I mean, between what Butt said, which certainly was you know got more attention, and Wernick and the the deputy minister Duguay, where, where does that leave us now, Chantal? Well, you've got the prime minister tomorrow We're giving a news conference. Apparently, it's I guess an open-ended exercise time-wise, uh, and he is planning to take the time to answer questions before yep. flying off somewhere. Uh, I would predict that the narrative you heard today has now become the narrative and you're not going to hear very many people stray from that narrative. We, except for this and that here and there, there wasn't much uh, light between uh, the clerk this afternoon or the deputy minister of justice and I f expect Justin Trudeau to stick very closely to uh, Jerry Butt's narrative. What do you think, Andrew? What, where does this go? Well, I'd like to see where it goes is in the committee, where we've now heard from Wernick twice. We've heard from Butts rebutting uh, Jody Wilson-Raybould on matters in which she was not allowed to speak, including. So are we going to hear back from her? Apparently not. Are we going to see the emails and texts between the principal players to validate this contention that nobody told Jerry Butts anything? Apparently not, according to the committee. Are we going to hear from Jane Philpott or any of these other officials uh, who have had something to say either according to Jody Wilson-Raybould or have said it publicly? Are we going to hear testimony from them? They're not in the witness list, yes. So it's all very well for the Prime Minister to have some kind of semi-contrition statement tomorrow. But what we'd like, to, I think what the public deserves to hear, uh, is some facts and some documents and some testimony from the players involved, uh, none of whom at this point are, the, the committee shows any signs of calling. Yeah, although Jody Wilson-Raybould did say today, I'm willing to go, come back, I'm willing to say more if they'll let me, I'm willing to you know, go beyond the waiver if they'll let me. So Paul, though, is the goal tomorrow and beyond this, it, I guess the hope would be that it just, what, goes away? Um, governments always help themselves when they present a case rather than refusing to present a case. Uh, today uh, was substantially better for Trudeau's case than the last month has been, and I, mm -hmm. I, I suspect he'll improve his case tomorrow. There's a lot of people who want to believe him, and uh, he, he's, he's giving them a chance to. But I don't think Andrew's going to get his wish. I think the committee is essentially going to shut down its um, proceedings pretty quickly. And in a month, this will be a few lines in campaign speeches where Justin Trudeau will say, look, I cared about 9,000 jobs. I don't know what these other people care about. The one thing that I was thinking is, though, remains is what to do with these two now MPs who remain in caucus. And that is the one sort of thing that could still get lit, I guess, if, if, if he has to make a decision somehow, Chantal. I uh, think that it would probably be very counterproductive for the prime minister to uh, not, he, what's the sentence? Keep your friends close and your enemies yes. closer uh, yes. to martyr uh, to leading or formerly leading uh, persons in this caucus by expelling them. I, I think he might as well just 
have them stay and try to uh, get some glory out of uh, entertaining a diversity of views. But I okay. don't know. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you. Thanks, Paul, for being here twice this week. Chantal and Andrew, I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>